This world is a dangerous place, and I'm not just talking about spiders and saturated fats. The information in your DNA is under constant threat. From things you would never suspect being dangerous, like sunlight, oxygen, even water, are extremely dangerous for your DNA. And that's not even to mention the actually scary sounding things like ionizing radiation, gamma rays, alkylation, chemical mutagens, and other pathogens. Every day, your DNA experiences 10,000 lost single letters of code and 10,000 cases of damage by oxidation and 55,000 single strand breaks, as well as 10 of the extremely bad double strand breaks. All of these happen every day in just one of your cells. Just one! Multiply that by the trillions of cells in your body and how in the, and I can't emphasize this enough, how in the actual world can we still be alive with our cells basically burning to the ground every second of every day? Great question. news, bad news situation, your body is like a library of information that's constantly on fire. Luckily, your library has an army of librarians who work tirelessly to search the library, extinguish the flames, and actually rewrite the missing information with extreme accuracy. As fast as the environment burns down your DNA, your body's defenses rebuild it. Without these incredible systems of damage recognition and repair, people couldn't exist. No life could exist, not even the lowly fungus or bacteria. This ability is essential for life, even the very first living organism. Otherwise, life could have never started. And it's actually unfair to compare our body's repair mechanisms to librarians. Because librarians, usually, have eyes to be able to sense problems and brains to solve them and hands to carry out those plans. Your cells need to be able to recognize and fix these quadrillions of problems autonomously, without a single thought or even any help from the Dewey Decimal System. Amazing. But how can a molecule, something with no mind, do something as complex as sensing and repairing? It's easy enough to imagine a molecule doing something simple like bumping into another molecule. That's just chemistry. Easy as a rock rolling downhill. <gasps> and I can understand how a scientist can sense things or modify things. But how can molecules know how a thing is supposed to be? How can they notice when it isn't that way? And how can they do anything to fix it and not make it worse? Imagine a glass of water detecting something wrong with a novel. It can't, it's just molecules. They can't read, they have no knowledge of what a novel is or what it's supposed to say, much less what to do about it if it could spot an error. It'll just sit there, being water. But inside of you, there are molecules that can detect errors in your DNA and much more. You can't live without several different repair mechanisms. We've only got time to cover one of the many systems and the simplest one at that. Here's how it works. The simplest DNA repair mechanism of many is intimidatingly called Base Excision Repair. Fixes a single damaged letter of DNA, and it's needed in every known form of life. If you had a damaged strand of DNA, first, one machine or protein enzyme scans down it and recognizes the single damaged letter. It would detach it from the DNA backbone, extracting it like an old dirty tooth leaving the functioning letters alone. Next, another machine detects the empty spot and breaks a single strand of the DNA backbone. A third machine then snips the DNA backbone again, removing the segment of backbone that's empty. These two enzymes have the ability to break the DNA backbone at will. Lucky ducky you, they only do this when needed and at a specific site of damage. How could enzymes like this just pop up at the start of life without first destroying all of the DNA in sight? A question for the ages. A fourth machine then inserts the replacement part, an intact matching letter of DNA, complete with a new backbone segment. Finally, a fifth machine welds the replacement part to the backbone on both sides, completing the restoration. 
This is all oversimplified baby talk, of course. The actual mechanics of these things is far beyond what we can convey here. But all this madness is happening every day in every single one of these tiny little danger hot dogs, also known as bacteria. If your reaction to all of this isn't, what? then you're just not paying attention. This is literal sub-microscopic surgery with the added monkey wrench of the cell does not stop operating while it's being repaired. Imagine trying to repair a Jeep while it's still running. And remember, base excision repair is just one of the many DNA repair pathways and not even the most complicated one. Even the simplest organisms absolutely need repair mechanisms. The first life and all life needs repair at the very beginning. In bacteria, the instructions to make these five enzymes are coded in DNA, requiring more than 8,000 letters of information. If you're smart, you'd notice, just like the scientist Manfred Eigen, that this is a huge paradox. That much DNA could have never accumulated unless it was first protected by repair mechanisms. But the repair mechanisms themselves require at least this much DNA. This sort of thing is kind of like taking kids hiking in nature. You could probably bring a few of them without losing any. But if you had to bring 8,000 kids on a hike, things get a bit more dicey. No, Joseph! Don't touch that! Susan! <laughs> without some system to track them and keep them from wandering away, you're guaranteed to lose some of them. And so it is with life. Without a repair mechanism, only a small handful of rungs of DNA could be accumulated before information started getting irreparably lost and a death spiral began. But some people say life started simpler. RNA stored information long before DNA existed. Don't you know that? This would only make the problem worse because RNA is so fragile and so easily damaged compared to DNA. And we know that life requires many RNA repair mechanisms that we haven't even touched upon, so that doesn't work. And on top of that, there's even more problems that can pop up in your cells outside of DNA that need to be fixed also. Remember, the cell is more than just a library. It's also a factory. And sometimes its manufacturing machines break or produce defective merchandise. So cells need to first identify an undesired or broken molecule. Then they can either fix it, recycle it for parts, or transport the junk to an ejection hatch in the cell for disposal. Here's just one example. The central manufacturing machine inside of you is called the ribosome. It takes the instructions in your DNA and RNA and follows them to build nanomachines. It's the factory or assembly line of the cell. And each cell can have anywhere from around 10,000 to many millions of ribosomes building things all at once. To read the instructions in RNA, it is threaded through the ribosome like a train through a tunnel. But sometimes the process goes wrong the RNA train can get stuck inside the ribosome tunnel before the thing it's building is finished. A bit like constipation. Deadly constipation. And there's no laxative on a prebiotic earth that can fix this problem. And it turns out it's a quite common problem in all life. Here's just one of your cells. Your body has trillions of them just like this. And as you grow, it'll need to replicate itself ribosomes to the rescue. That's just the sort of thing it does. But ribosomal constipation is so common that before this cell could make a single copy of itself, every one of its tens of thousands of ribosomes will get clogged up five times over. So life requires a way to detect and fix this kind of thing as well. Floating around inside of the cell of all living things are machines that spot errors and label bad molecules demolition machines, and recycling machines, among others. Fun fact, one in 20 machines in your body are actually for destroying the other 19. Hmm, that's comforting. This machine can recognize when a ribosome is stuck, so it sticks a label on the half-finished protein called a degron. Then the unfinished protein needs to be chopped up for parts. Luckily, your body has little molecular chainsaws that love to chop up proteins. But hang on a second. Isn't it a bit dangerous to have protein chainsaws floating around inside of you? 
What if they chop up some useful thing? Wouldn't you know it, they're programmed to only chop up things labeled with a Degron. Proteins that destroy other proteins are essential for life. Don't worry, you're safe. For now. And then, the defective RNA has to be chopped up too. Since if it's let free, it'll just keep clogging up other ribosomes. So a different label is applied to the mRNA and different chainsaws jump into action. Hang on, why not just use the same machines? That seems sort of wasteful. Good question. Sort of like recycling paper is a different process than recycling aluminum, different molecular machines are needed to recycle different biological parts. Maybe so, but some people will object that life started simpler. Without all of this fancy stuff? Okay, ribosomes are admittedly fancy. And yet, as fancy as they are, they sometimes goof and make a mistake. If we're going to imagine that earlier life had something simpler than a ribosome, something more crude, less fancy, it would only be more prone to make errors and produce more junk. This would make the problem worse and not better. The need to recognize and repair things would only increase the simpler life got. Life could never have started without sophisticated recognition, recycling, and repair mechanisms. If they weren't sophisticated at the start, they would have caused more damage than good. They have to detect exactly what needs to be fixed and repair only those molecules. But obtaining these sophisticated molecular machines would require more information than can possibly be accumulated or maintained in the absence of those very repair mechanisms. DNA was designed with the expectation that errors would happen as well as the foresight to be able to be fixed. Blind forces like Darwinian evolution have no expectations. They have no foresight. Only intelligent beings do. Thanks for watching.